Hey everybody, we got a good one for you today. Today we're doing a video on the Dreamcast. Can you believe that it's been 20 years since the Dreamcast released in the US? 9999. Oh my gosh, I remember the hype behind this thing. I remember going to Babbage's and playing the Japanese ones and playing Sonic Adventure and it was on the very top of my Christmas list and I was very fortunate to get one in of that year, Christmas of 99. So, and I actually have the poor guy here right now. Uh, this is him. This is my original Dreamcast I got in Christmas of 99. As you can see, it's a shell of his former self, but he will live on in the museum of... Uh, Stereo gaming, and uh, you know, uh, this is my he survived my teenage modding years. Uh, this is my attempt at you know trying to make it personalize and be cool. I did like a a matte black. This was way before matte black was cool, by the way. Um, a matte black top with a kind of like a a specked kind of like a I don't know a speckled finish there. It worked. Uh, it looked pretty cool. Got a lot of com comments on it. Maybe not the best, like good comments, but. Comments nonetheless. This is a regular, just regular old Dreamcast. It's not modded or anything. But for the anniversary, I thought, well, let's do something. Let's let's do something fun for the for the uh, for the Dreamcast and, and mod one or something like that, right? So I thought, well, what can we do? There's a lot of good stuff you can do for the Dreamcast. You can put an ODE drive like a GDE MU or a USB GDROM in there and basically remove the need for uh, using discs. Uh, you can change the power supply out with a Pico power supply and a, an adapter. And uh, and then you can also add a fan, a new fan, because the fan in here is really loud. You can never hear it because the GD-ROM drive is so loud, but once you get rid of the GD-ROM drive, then the fan really shines and shows you how loud that is, too. It's like, hey, you know, hold my hold my beer. I'm going to be loud, too. You can do all that stuff, and you can get a pretty nice little console, basically. I mean, hundreds of awesome games to play, and you're good to go. I thought, well... Is that really worth making a video? <laughs> like everyone, every, there's a ton of videos out there. Like, oh, I put a GDE MU in my my console. Let me review it because my opinion's better than the other guy. I'm not gonna do that. Um, that's not my style, anyway. So I thought, okay, let's go back in time and change history. What would happen if Sega kept making consoles? They kept in the business. They didn't make their mistakes they made, and they are still going strong, right? What would have happened? Chances are, like Sega normally does, and most most companies do that make consoles, they would have made a revision of the Dreamcast. They'd done it with all their other consoles, so historically, they would have done it with the Dreamcast as well. They would have found, taken all the issues with the first model Dreamcast, and they would have probably addressed most of them, and sold the console at a slightly less price, and usually a little bit smaller. What are the issues with the Dreamcast? Well, first off, the GD-ROM drive is loud and lets you run burnt discs on it. I think they did actually address that with the like a, a a small revision to the Dreamcast, but they would have probably done a better job with it. What else would they have done? Well, they probably would have made it quieter. They would have made it smaller and probably got rid of the serial port because no one really used that. Probably changed this to a broadband adapter and just had it kind of like built in. Or they would have replaced the serial adapter with like maybe like some kind of USB or something. And then you can plug an external modem in there to make it smaller and stuff like that. Other than that, yeah, they probably would have just made it smaller and uh, maybe with some internal memory or something so you don't need the VMUs or I don't know, whatever. So, but they didn't do that. They ended up uh, seizing their console production and went on to just make some really good games. And nowadays, I guess they're making games still, but not very good ones. I think Sonic Mania was the last good game by them that I played. I'm not gonna get into that, so. <clears throat> I thought, well, let's do that. Let's make us let's make a Dreamcast S or a Dreamcast Model 2, whatever you want to call it. Um, and here it is right here. Let's go ahead and Alright. Drum roll, please. I'll insert one in editing. Anyways, here we go. Voila. Here it is. The Dreamcast S or the Dweamcast. <laughs> um, so obviously the case is from a Wii. I thought about just making my own case, but I thought, why not use something I already had? I got an old broken Wii from like a salvage shop for like $6. I took it out, I gutted it, and the Dreamcast motherboard and all its components that I added fit perfectly and really well. And it's a really nice little package. So I'm pretty happy with it. You have your power button here. 
not the prettiest thing, but it works great. You have your LED, your controller ports are all original. You have the fan. A little jank with the drill holes, but hey, what can you do? Uh, I did them all by eye and by hand. So, um, but there's a there's a fan here, and it uh, I needed some more holes for for better airflow. You have your barrel jack for power. You have your AV connector, same as uh, on the regular Dreamcast. These panels on the Wii that normally would open for controller ports um, are just they're just kind of glued in place. Um, I took the logo off my old Dreamcast and put it on there, give it a kind of cool little vibe. And uh, I kind I wrapped everything with a automotive white shiny vinyl to kind of make it look like the Wii was, um, not as the kind of drab old computer white that was popular that in this time era, like the early 2000s, late 90s. But this is a nice bright white. It's not perfect. There's a little wrinkles and stuff around the edges some some places, but. Uh, on a shelf, it looks great. People are going to be like, what is that? I'm really happy with it. It came out really good. I'll put some video of it booting up and stuff like that. But why don't I go grab a tri-wing screwdriver and I'll show you what it looks like inside. Okay, so in order to disassemble it, it's pretty easy. There's only four screws in the entire thing. And then there's the barrel jack in the back that needs unscrewed if you want to take it off. Um, I will be putting the little rubber feet over these two holes here where the screws are. But then you have these two screws for the front panel as well. I try to make it as easy to disassemble as possible. This is a tri-wing tri -wing screwdriver. Nintendo uh, employs the use of tri-wing screw heads. Like, you can't go on Amazon and buy a tri-wing screwdriver. Like, it's going to prevent people from going getting in their consoles. But, whatever. Whatever you want to do, man. Take those two out, and you're basically ready to go. Console's going to open up. So you kind of you have to kind of, when you put it together, you got to kind of go at an angle like that. So in order to get it apart, you lift the back up first, slide it out, and it opens up. We have the power cable. I'm just going to leave that connected. But there you go. That is the inside. Let me grab the camera, and we can take a little tour here. Oh, also, the other thing I did is I replaced the battery for uh, a replaceable, rechargeable battery. That's a pretty common thing to do, too. Just did that real quick. So let me go through, and I'll kind of point everything out. I had to mod the fan. I'll put a picture of the of what I did. So the Dreamcast is crazy. It won't run unless there's a fan detected, and most notably, its own fan. Its fan's very specific and unique, so if you add, like, a Noctua or in my case, this is the fan from the Wii, you need to do some stuff in order for the Dreamcast to, to think that it's got its own fan. So that took a little trickery, but we got it. So plugged in there, runs underneath there, and then I have it so you can disconnect. This is the fan from the Wii. Um, it's really quiet and it works really well. It runs in the same voltage and stuff, so it worked pretty good. And it's just hot glued you know, onto the base of the console here. And that's where I cut out those extra holes. Obviously, we have the GDEMU. The one thing most maybe some people won't notice is that I trimmed the like the top like half inch off the top of this. There's normally a like a post here that you can uh, like put into the board and stuff. Uh, in order to get the the power supply to fit, I had to trim the top of this off about uh, half an inch. So um, you'll notice that. I got the memory card there, loaded up with all kinds of good games. Here's the front panel connector plug. I actually had to modify that to fit in the case too. You can see that it's like kind of more tilted down. This is the Pico power supply. I just got that on Amazon or eBay. And then here's the adapter for the Dreamcast. Normally you would slide this part right here over these pins here. I had to trim these down about half and then run um, some cables solder some cables. These are actually cables from a power supply, like a computer power supply cable. I soldered them from here to here to get that to fit. Just hot glued that. That's right onto the, this board here. The LED is the actual LED from the Dreamcast. It's that orange color one. It's kind of hard to find that color of LED. And I wanted to retain that kind of cool orange glow, the orange vibe. This is the ribbon cable that goes from the controller port to the console. That's not changed. There's the power button. That's the actual power button from the Dreamcast. I, it's a really satisfying click. 
what else anything else obviously i trimmed a lot of stuff where the fan is that's where the modem all the modem stuff was i trimmed a lot of that off to get it to fit i trimmed the corner this corner off a little bit here kind of jank not too bad the serial port is uh i, I don't plan on ever using a, the serial port for any reason so i kind of trimmed around it and made it flush so i can fit it in here that's about it it fits really well in here uh i i did put some like bracing and stuff you can't really see but there's some like i, I super glued some a uh, piece of plastic in order to brace it and then the front panel um i used this stuff called jb weld putty in order to kind of get it to go flush you can see the kind of the remnants in there i sanded it all down and stuff on the front but in the back i just kind of just left it as is a lot of super glue used. I'm not proud of myself, but I did use a lot of super glue, or not super glue, but hot glue. But you can see some, you know, there's a little bit of wrinkle here and there in the front, but at, at, at a distance, it doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, this, If I was to do this again, I learned a lot, and it would be a lot better the next time I did it. But that's about it, really. Yeah, it's really quiet. You have the, the Dweem cast, so I have my power cable here. I didn't have the right size barrel jack, so I had to put this adapter on it. I'll get a regular uh, barrel size, whatever, but anyways, just plug that in there. All right, now we have your normal Dreamcast AB cord here. Plug that in there. Nice and tight. And then grab a controller. All right, got the Dreamcast plugged into my little Trinitron here. As you can see, it works fine. Wait for that to stop and then you can listen to see how quiet it is. Normally this is when the GD-ROM would spin up and start going neat, neat, neat in the fan, but pretty quiet. My computer fans are louder so you can't even hear it, but the Wii fan is really quiet. It works really good. So, and then there's your GD menu screen. The one thing I didn't mention was my GD EMU is a it's a clone. It's not a real one. Here we have the menu. Works great. And let's load up a game here. Classic. Yeah, I'm in the screen. Hi. So you hear that again, press start to skip it. Cool. Yeah, it works fine. Really quiet. You can enjoy the game without waking up your parents. With the it runs really good. I played a lot of games and stuff so far and it works great. So that's about it. Thanks everyone for watching. I know it's been a while since my last video. I apologize for that, but I try to give original content only. I don't try to just do kind of cookie cutter stuff. So, you know, I appreciate uh, everyone's patience and I appreciate all the follows and subscriptions and stuff like that. And you guys are great. And uh, just stay tuned for more stuff. And, um, you know, I got another one coming up pretty soon, by the at least by the end of the year. So uh, I'll see you guys then and uh, enjoy your day. And uh, happy anniversary, Dreamcast. We love you. And you, you're a great console. Bye.